Hi YouTube family, welcome to Concept in Medicine. I know you are wondering what we are going to be looking at today. You can see from above, Framingham's criteria, Framingham's criteria for diagnosis of congestive cardiac failure. Kindly make sure to subscribe, we continue. All right, let's talk about the Framingham's criteria for diagnosis of congestive cardiac failure. Then the question goes, what is congestive cardiac failure? Definitely we are looking at a left ventricular failure and a right ventricular failure occurring simultaneously. They are occurring together and that will give us <coughs> a conjunction in the systemic circulation and a conjunction in the pulmonary circulation. So there's conjunction everywhere. That's what we call congestive cardiac failure. For the family house criteria for the diagnosis of congestive cardiac failure, it consists of the major criteria which has nine criteria under the major. Then we have the minor criteria which has seven criteria. Let's talk about the major criteria which has nine constituents. What are they? The first one is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, which is described as the patient waking up at night and gasping for air. And what is the reason for paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea? You should know that at night there is increased parasympathetic activity. And in response to that, there is increased splanchnic redistribution of blood, accompanied by increased vasodilatation. And as a result, more blood enters into the lungs, causing pulmonary conjunction, leading to dyspnea at night. And is referred to as paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. It happens all of a sudden. It happens all of a sudden. The next criteria is the X3 gallop. We spoke about that in our cardiovascular uh, series. You may want to roll back and watch that video. So the next one is crepitations. The next one is neck vein distension. The next one, increase jugular venous pressure greater than 16 centimeters of water at the right atrium, meaning the measurement is taken from the right atrium. The next one, hepatojugular reflux, which is when you apply gentle continuous pressure at the right upper quadrant, that's at the right coastal margin, there will be a transient increase in the jugular venous pressure. If it is present, yes, we should know that that is a major criterion. Then the next one, cardiomegaly. That is when the cardiothoracic ratio exceeds 0.5 on a chest radiogram. The next one, acute pulmonary edema. Then finally, weight loss greater than 4.5 kg in five days in response to treatment. Which treatment? Definitely is going to be the diuretics because more water will be lost and there will be a decrease in weight. So those constitute the major criteria. Now, let's look at the minor criteria, which has seven constituents. So the first one, we have the bilateral ankle edema. The next one, we are talking about nocturnal cough. Another one, we are talking about tachycardia. That is the heart rate greater than 120 beats per minute. Another one, we are looking at dyspnea on ordinary exertion. The next one, hepatomegaly. Another one, pleurite effusion. And finally, decrease in vital capacity by one third from the maximum recorded. Then the question goes, what is vital capacity? Vital capacity simply refers to the maximum amount of air exhaled after a maximum inhalation. Normal vital capacity ranges from 3 to 5 liters with an average of what, 4 liters in a normal adult. Uh, vital capacity mathematically is equal to the inspiratory reserve volume plus the expiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume. Then the question goes, what is tidal volume? So the tidal volume is the amount of air inhaled or exhaled during a normal respiratory cycle. And the average normal tidal volume varies in males and females. In males, it's equivalent to 500 mils. In females, it's equivalent to 400 mils. How do we interpret the Framingham's criteria? For the interpretation, the presence of at least two major criteria is diagnostic of congestive cardiac failure or 
the presence of at least one major criterion and at least two minor criteria as diagnostic of congestive cardiac failure. So in a question where you are suspecting a heart failure, look out for the criteria that we are talking about, either major or minor, and use the interpretation to make your diagnosis. I believe we've made an understanding. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and comment the concept you would like to see in my next video. This is Concept in Medicine, and my name is Dr. Dell. Bye-bye.